Hi everyone, thanks for attending. Good afternoon. I'll be presenting this talk about I own your building manager system. It's about <coughs> hacking access control security platforms and building management systems all together. So um, let's start with just short introduction. I work for Applied Risk, which is based in Netherlands in Amsterdam, which is a company that deals with industrial security control penetration testing, uh, covering a variety of sectors and industries like maritime, pharmaceuticals, water, chemical, manufacturing, oil and gas, transportation, and including, of course, control systems. One of them is building management system, which is uh, parent, let's say, about of access control systems altogether. So a little bit about myself. My name is Joko Krstic. I'm coming from Macedonia. Um, I'm also have 15 years of experience in the security industry, member of the International Cyber Threat Task Force, founder of Zero Science Lab, ethical hacking instructor. Love doing vulnerability discovery and exploitation, finding zero days on a daily basis. And of course, I'm a ping pong amateur. Somebody's interested in that. <laughs> so let's get right to it. Agenda for today, I'm going to introduce what is a BMS or building automation system. Uh, we're going to discuss about uh, different jargons or terminology used in the industry, the architecture of the implementation of the system itself, security research, key takeaways, and the next steps. Um, so industry jargons, we've seen all around different types of jargons or terminology used for these types of systems, which is building management systems or can be building automation systems or building energy management systems including PLCs, SCADA, of course, LNG management system I've told you about, electronic door access control, which is a subcategory of entire building management system solutions. So in this research that we've done, um, together with my colleague and main contributor to the project, Sipke Melema, we've done research against five different products for, from four different vendors but not in total. In total, there were various or large number of products and vendors that we've analyzed, but due to the nature of the exploitation and the discovered vulnerabilities, we chose to just add five of them. And this is going on from uh, last year in May, so it's one year almost. Um, of course, most common currently interested terms are building management system and building management and control systems. Basically, it's like a you know, centralized solutions from controlling an entire building. So what is a BMS or BAS? It's an intelligent microprocessor-based controller system that is installed in an operator workstation, for example, in the local area network, controlling a building, um, controlling building's technical systems and field controllers, various devices. We're talking about sensors, um, access control, physical access controls on door gates, doors and gates and uh, elevator access. Also, we're talking about accessing live streams from a camera or modifying the streams. Uh, it's installed in every major building so far. In 2019, we're going to see a lot of uh, different variety of ad advertisement, and we were focusing on the exposed ones on the Internet itself. So BMS for end users, this is a typical let's say, structure or architecture of a building manager system and the components that it holds around it. So you have radiators, of course. You can control windows blinds. You can control lightning system, the, the hydraulics, ventilation, and uh, air conditioning system altogether, including, as I mentioned, the elevator access and the physical access controls. You have temperature controls. You can change the temperature up and down. You can, um, you know the VAV or the variable air volume level. You can control temperature of the water, the boilers, the sensor of a gas in the garage, the gates for the garage, the access to the garage as well, entirely, and the weather monitoring system as well. So there are a lot of different components uh, compiling a single building management system. We're gonna discuss several of them. So what does BMS do? As I, you know, Informed, of course, this is a Google picture of Sydney offices in Australia. There was an incident a couple of years ago where a researcher found a zero day in a Tridium Niagara framework affecting more than 250,000, no, 204, 5, 0, 0, 0, yeah, 200,000 around devices around the world, controllers, which had direct 
uh, impact and uh, was used as an unauthenticated remote root code execution vulnerability. So that was, I'm not sure which year, but yeah, we're using easy IO controllers or Tidium Niagara framework that attackers managed to find zero days and exploit that remotely because the systems and the building itself was exposed to the internet directly. So what does BMS do? The role of BMS today, today building operation, to control, to measure, to monitor, control applications, of course. Some of the building control applications uh, can involve zone temperatures monitoring and control, zone CO2 monitoring, main plant chiller, toilet, car park, kitchen, gym, lightning, fire system, and a lot of system as well. After hours building control and, as I mentioned as well, VAV, temperature as well, not to repeat myself, it's like, this is a typical system components for field devices within a single building management control system, is a controller at the bottom. You can see what it can control. It can use different variety of uh, protocols, but most of them is uh, using the BACnet protocol, which is an open uh, protocol, or Loneworks, or pure TCP IP. So you can connect to chillers and boilers, damper actuators, variable speed drivers, VSDs, airflow pressures as well, temperature, relativity, humidity, voltage currents as well. You can also monitor and modify current um, power overview and billing information for a building. Um, I'm going to discuss also where the, the coverage games comes into play. So typical components, this is the network, you have the management network, and then you are separated or segregated by Ethernet and network segregation, of course, to additional field controllers. And then at the bottom, you have the PLCs using Modbus protocol support. These are the interaction with other building management system you can use like for surveillance and access controls, which we will discuss here. Live uh, fire safety systems as well, lightning systems, temperature, monitoring, digital video as well. All packages like that. Is user, inter uh, user interfaces. So there are plenty of different user interfaces for a building management system. Typical user interfaces are maybe as a tech client on Windows machine or Linux machine that connects directly to the controller within a local area network. Some of them also can be built in displays separately or specifically for that purpose. And also, of course, web interface exposure. So we will be focusing more on the web interface disclosure or exposure, sorry, and to see how much devices are ex really exposed from the ones that we done research on. So security research. We've done some testing against these type of, uh, these vendors, let's say, and products. This is the building management system and electronic door access control systems, which you can see as it's like a variety of uh, different types of vendors. We all know some of them, of course. We'll be talking about uh, specifically for Nortec security and control access control platform, uh, the Optergy building management system, Prima systems, of course, about uh, access control as well. Uh, this includes um, including Computrols, which is a yeah US-based company as well. So we can you know we can discuss the exposure of these systems in a bit. So this advertisement for 2019 provide access to all functionality via a standard browser over the internet. It's dangerous. Software shall have a companion mobile apps. You can iOS or Android. You can just try to analyze that as well. Designed to control, monitor, HVAC, lightning, access, and fire alarm systems, all in one location and one centralized place. Perfect for commercial, industrial, banking, medical, retail, hospitality, and other businesses where users need to secure their facilities, manage access of personnel, create and analyze reports, and monitor the system from any web browser. So this is an indication if you hear like, yeah, the systems are accessed from a web browser over the internet. So this uh, attack surface is just plain old directly trying to attack the building itself. So there are a lot of famous buildings we've seen in our research. Uh, so these are the targets that we've analyzed so far within this year. So this Nortec Lina Reamer G3, which was also, there are some research done two years ago about it from a Google security researcher, Andrew Griffiths, published also. Um, Nortec Linear Emerge 
50p or 5,000p is a different product, different code base. So it's also an access control platform, which allows us to just remotely, without authentication, open doors, unlock, lock, access to elevators, a stream of cameras, and um, yeah. Optergy Proton or Enterprise Building Management System, Prima Systems Access Control Platform, and Computerol CBAS Web Building Management System. These are all the targets that we've chosen to present in the research paper. The research paper will be available in June. It's going to be a technical white paper around 138 pages. So you can check it out on the Applied Risk website. So first things first, of course, we've, you know, tried to have a black box approach for every target possible because, you know, it's not, it's a bit of cheating if you have everything, you know, in place in front of you. So we've tried to do what a real attacker would do to just try to in, imagine that we have only access to web um, interfaces. So this is uh, an example of linear eMERGE and uh, Nortec, of course. This is how it looks like for uh, Optergy, Proton Enterprise, and Prima Systems. It's also an access control protocol, access control platform. And of course, the CBAS uh, uh, building management system, of course. So a little bit of data. Uh, over 2,500 standalone control systems accessible from the internet. As of now, maybe more. The number of the exposed services or the exposed systems were increasing on biweekly basis especially for Nortec, Linear. More than 10 million people can be affected, potentially, because this is based on, uh, you know, specification of the product. Any product as allowing for a person to, uh, for people to be in the database more than 500, more than 10,000, or it depends on the system. So we calculated this, and based on the exposed services and the specification of products, physically, can be, you know, 10 million people can be affected physically, not just like stealing data or private information. 30,000 doors can be opened within 20 seconds or all around the globe in 200 facilities. This means that this is separate from access control systems, building management systems and access control systems. So let's see what software is used or software technologies in controllers. Um, this includes the access control and the building manager system as well. So we have Unix Linux file system as a firmware. For the web server, of course, for the web interface, we've seen Apache, Nginx, and, you know, light HTTPD, go ahead. PHP is used as a web technology, front end, Java, JavaScript as well, Python, Bash, CGI, ASP. Protocols, BACnet stack, We've done some research as well on the BACnet stack, BACnet protocol itself, but yeah, this is uh, out of scope for this paper. Uh, Modbus protocol support as well. Database management systems, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and database management systems, of course. Firebird, Interbase. There was an interesting uh, disclosure of uh, firmware, but we're going to yeah, discuss this a bit later. So what we did in uh, the usual approach in the Applied Risk Labs, uh, we managed to do a variety of uh, services, let's say. And, uh, sorry. Yeah. So, of course, once we get the firmware, and I'll explain how we got the firmware from all of the vendors, uh, we've done some firmware analysis, of course, static and dynamic program analysis as well. So we've done protocol fuzzing and... Um, reverse engineer the binaries, and we've found a lot of issues. Basically, we found every possible vulnerability existing in the security industry. So you can just think of title. We can say, yes, that product has it. No. Um, of course, at the end, exploit research and development. So we develop exploits as well for all of them. Um, it's interesting how we got the firmers of uh, you know, different vendors. So we're going to discuss this now. For example, this is an Optergy, um, obtaining a video example. Uh, this is an Optergy video from the marketing team they did. So once we do, uh, we wanted to do an OSINT intelligence gathering. So we've go on to YouTube, search for Optergy, found the marketing videos that they show how to upgrade a firmware for end user, of course. So in that case, this is an actual screenshot from a video on Vmail where they download the firmware and just, you know, uploading Afterwards, so we just paused the video, retyped the URL, got the firmware, 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, everything was there. Once you have the firmware, you have the basically the source code. Once you have the source code, then it's like Merry Christmas, you know. So now, of course, the URL is remo removed now. Any vendor, every vendor was informed about the issues. Uh, not all of them created patches for it, but uh, most of the vendors created patches. And yeah, I think recently, like yesterday, they just uh, released an advisory. I'll show you this later. So we got the firmware from Optogy like this. This is a simple approach. Of course, we've tried to read manuals as well. We've discovered default credentials, hardcore credentials, and uh, yeah, it's everything on the, in, on the internet. This is a second example from Nortec Linear, uh, where we managed to, you know, we got the firmware from a different research done previously. So we've done just uh, code execution, dumped the database, and we saw that in the database there are clear text credentials for connecting to the FTP, which is the main repository for the firmwares. And we were informing the vendor, of course, they were communicating in the beginning, but suddenly they just decided to drop the communication. And it's still unpatched, of course. So they were trying to, and I think as I speak now, they're trying to update the firmware as well, but we can see if they try to update the firmware. So we always test the latest firmware as well. They're informed about it. But uh, yeah, they're using the FTP, so this is how it looks like when you just navigate to it with the credentials provided in the database as clear text passwords. Look, a lot of issues, guys. I mean, their products are like, totally broken. Um, we'll see some examples more. For example, this is a C, uh, Computrols for building management systems. A simple CVN subversion repository of the entire firmware was present in the target that we've tested in the lab. So you can just download the firmware itself directly because it allowed in the, uh, directory indexing. And uh, yeah, read the code, find backdoors as well. And I'm gonna discuss about backdoors as well because we've discovered a couple of backdoors in set products. IoT and IIoT vulnerabilities, basically we found every possible vulnerability in all of these products or you know, building management system and access control systems that allowed us to just do unauthenticated remote root code execution and just try to open doors or just turn off the lights. I tried to do this before the, you know, joining this conference to start to try this building if it's using some known building management system, if it's also exposed on the internet, so I could just, you know, maybe try to shut down the lights. That didn't work. Uh, it's not exposed. So the main problem was that a lot of, uh, you know, interfaces were exposed to the internet, which is a problem, of course. And, um, yeah, we've discovered like cross-site scripting, certification bypasses, SQL injections, file directory traversals. I mean, I can just go on on the list. Every possible vulnerability is there. And of course, memory corruptions. There's a buffer overflow issue in one of the products. As an example, um, this is uh, while we did some reversing of the binaries that holds, um, that was the main CGI or gateway interface for the linear E3 uh, from Nortec. This is a, just a simple one, one example of a cookie traversal because um, once you see the code, pseudocode, we can see that there's a path traversal issue with an open function and before there's a syspath issue here. And before that, we've discovered that you can upload unauthenticated, you can upload any firmware, not any firmware, but the firmware you can upload it without authentication. So we've chained that and use the directory traversal from the cookie to authenticate it, to be, you know, to bypass authentication itself. So once the bypass of the authentication occurs, because we uploaded a valid session cookie, which we also reverse and know how the cookie looks like as a, as a file, we just uploaded that file to any arbitrary location, and from the cookie, the cookie just, re you know, searches for a valid file name, and it just reads it successfully, and then we have a authentication bypass like this. So it's really like a twisted and a chain vulnerability reactions. Um, also, another example. So this is a stored root password in a binary, not just one, but like several binaries, and the, the root password is all over the place. So you can just easily, I don't know, go online and start opening doors. I don't know, man. It's a dangerous thing. And um, you can see it clearly in the firmware. The vendor didn't want to, you know, understand what is happening. 
And uh, yeah, this is just one example of all the issues that we've discovered. There are a lot of issues. For example, backdoors. This assembly of the binary or source code revealed to us that there are backdoors present and not, not just real or just regular backdoors. There are smart backdoors with some logic to you have to overcome to just you know execute the code itself. Because backdoor, these backdoors allow unauthenticated remote root code execution and full system access. So you just shut down the building one click. This is an example from the Java backdoor discovered in uh, one building management system. As you can see that there is a challenge. Oh, sorry. So once you click the challenge, you get a response as a timestamp value. And that value has to be SHA-1 encoded or, you know, hashed. And that, and then, uh, that MD5 has to be, you know, calculated as a SHA-1. Uh, sorry, MD5. And after that, you can, you have to concatenate those values and provide it as an answer here. And then you can provide the ID, or not ID, the command that you want to execute. And basically, they had this wide open like this, unauthenticated. So you have a web interface for the backdoor itself. So you can just type, you know, if you click the get here, you can get the challenge. You have to calculate it manually aside because I'm thinking that you're using a special program for this. And once you calculated everything together, concatenated and provide it as an answer, you type in the, past, the command that you want to execute and click exec. It's going to execute as the current running web user privileges. Of course, they removed it now. They said it's like a you know, forgotten development console. But <laughs> yeah, the backdoor was really sophisticated. So I don't know if it's a, you know. So this is this, this is how it looks like when you try to access um, using this backdoor account. It's just one simple script that just automates all the things and just you have root. How do I get root? Because the, I told you previously that Optergy uses uh, the web user, but they also have a flaw in the sudoers file because they allowed everything to be executed as root, as that user. So I can just sudo id, this is the outcome. System access also provided for linear E3 emerge series. Just with one click, you have the ID command here as light HTTPD, but when you echo this style as the user password, the root password, you can execute pass, uh, commands as root directly. Some other examples also, there's a file upload issue as well. You can just unauthenticate it. You can upload any file because it's using the PHP input wrapper. So you can just write anywhere, anything, and just create yourself a web shell and get the root access as well. Also, we created a Metasploit session. Um, to be more convenient, of course, I'm going to show you a demo at the end of this uh, presentation to show you how it's possible to remotely unlock a door at the stand that we had at uh, Applied Risk, the dollhouse, if anybody's seen that. Um, this is for Linear Emerge 50p. And 5000p is a different product, different code base. Uh, we've seen a lot of... Uh, you know, critical, critical buildings, critical, uh, famous buildings, let's say, or access control of the buildings that we've seen, because you can easily see that without even, you know, interacting with the system. Just show them. And remote root, of course. Optology Proton also had an issue besides the other issues. I'm not, you know, this is just a, you know, I'm saying that the final issues mentioned, but low hanging fruits vulnerabilities as well, memory corruptions, privilege escalations, directory traversals all over the place. So everything will be detailed, of course, in the paper that we're going to release. But this is just a, you know, end game, presenting you to see how it's possible to execute code on a building management system. Because once you have access, you can just modify everything, you know? This is a Prima Flex set. This is a, a issue with uh, access control system, which they allowed to download a you know predictable name of a database. And they, because if you chain this vulnerability with another one that we discovered that they allow logging with MD5 hashes, once you download the database, you can dump the hashes. Once you dump the hashes, you can log in as that hash as a system admin, for example, and just you know break the control itself in the place. A second uh, vulnerability also allowed remote root code execution uh, using this Google token, uh, Google Facebook social token, social login uh, uh, feature. And yeah, you can do this only three times and then you, your IP will be blocked. 
because yeah, it's using this as a you know wrong password, but we managed to get ID. This is discovered by uh, Sipke Melama. Also, there's a uh, authenticated code execution as well. So for authenticated issues, there are a lot of authenticated issues. I'm just mentioning some of them. Python uh, scripts are already uh, developed. You can execute code as well in Prima systems. You can also upload uh, direct Python scripts on the controller itself, authenticated, and just execute as root. Um, also for CBAS, Computrols. We did not get remote root connect, uh, you know, code execution on this one. We just had a remote code execution with the web user account. But yeah, we're here dumping the database credentials super secret and, you know, the users of the database string. So what are the impacts? Um, it, remotely lock out, lock and unlock doors, gates, of course, physical access, to restricted areas, control LLA access, monitor the human behavior and movement by reading logs. Once you enter an access controller or building management system, you can see who is going to the gym at 2 p.m., for example. So you can do something about that. Intercept and video, uh, control video stream surveillance. You can freeze, you can modify, modify electrical overview and billing information. I can change my billing information to be zero, not to pay electricity in that residential building or company building or industrial or monuments, and uh, you know, so on. It's like never-ending. Manipulate HVAC, of course, disrupt critical operations. Impact, this is what you get once you log into the web interface. I'm gonna show you a demo with, you know, controlling the door from the command line directly from the binary itself with the given commands which we reversed and know the logic of it. This is a um, screenshot also from the Optergy. You can see, I don't know if you can see clearly, but you can, you know, disclose some information because it says here three 134 devices connected, which means that using BACnet protocol, which is the building automation control network protocol, which you can just use, maybe there are sensors or field devices or any, any, you know, small things. Boiler controls, this is just, I don't know, one of many screenshots or interfaces that we've seen that you know, uh, that we needed to know what you can control once you get access or the, you know, description of the given product. Prima system, access control platform. You can see how you can just, with one click, you can open, unlock, or lock forever a door, or unlock it forever, or just have a man, in, man trap feature. You can lock someone inside. Camera stream disclosure as well, in an elevator. So you can, uh, you know, control the stream, disable it, you know. And uh, this is also an example from CBAS where you can control the temperature and the lower part. You can just change the value, make everyone, you know, be cold or extremely hot. And, uh, yeah, this is also from the vendors itself as a case study, potential targets. It's not like that we've seen this, but potentially because they're using this software and everything is patched, everything is, you know, released, everything is informed, people know about it, they patch it. But you can just, you know, some universities or Statue of Liberty, I don't know, anything can happen. So, upgrade. Optogy New Enterprise 245 has been released, crediting applied risk, of course, for our research. We've been in collaboration with all the vendors, except one as well, uh, of course, and uh, everybody was, you know, extremely nice, collaborative, and they created patches in timely fashion, discovered, uh, released new firmware versions, and informed their customers to protect their exposed instances of building management and control systems. This is another upgrade for CBAS, where they just released it yesterday as a, you know, public announcement, but this is fixed before that, of course. Um, during this research, we've uh, discovered more than 100 zero days, and that doesn't mean that we have to have a, a CVE for all of them, because none of the, uh, not all of the products that we've tested are in this presentation or in the paper itself. So it's still, let's say, ongoing. But so far we have 48 CVEs assigned. And uh, yeah, a lot of them are not even uh, patched yet. Some of them are not even presented here. So we're moving on forward for, to you know do some other research on building management systems. But yeah, in 2019, exposure of web, uh, building management systems on the internet is a dangerous thing. So a lot of people can say, yeah, we're using a cloud-based solution, centralized solution, password protected, but a lot of vendors here has default credentials. You can just enter it like uh, with admin-admin. 
similar like that. So chaining some of the vulnerabilities that we discovered allows, allowed us to have an unauthenticated code execution directly and take full control of the building or the access control itself. Jails as well. Come on, you can open the doors, guys. Um, recommendation, of course, secure building management systems. So in security, be aware of insecurity of protocols by design. BACnet is really unstable. We managed to crash it in some simulation. Follow industrial control best practices guidelines along with vendor supply chain security testing and secure software development lifecycle. Do firmware analysis on your products. Do version control and patch management because one of the vendors, there was a failure in version control. There was a new version that patched something by coincidence, then in a newer version, um, the old vulnerability pops up. So there's a, there's some, uh, it's a, it's a mess. I don't know. Um, this is the dollhouse we made for the challenges we had yesterday and today for, from the pipe risk to, you know, try to hack and open the door or try to hack the PLCs and modify the lights of the house or hack the HMI, which is the small screen top of the right there. You could play with it. And, uh, yeah, let me try now the demo. Hopefully it's gonna work. Let me see. Time. Dollhouse. Uh, Dollhouse. Let me see if I ping. This is the IP address of the controller downstairs. Let me see the stream because I need you to see the camera's live stream here. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is live downstairs. Imagine that I'm from home here, opening doors in some lab, chemicals, pills, stuff happening, you know. It didn't happen. So let me just try to run this exploit on this thing. It's going to ask me, do I want to dump the credentials? I say, yeah. It's going to dump the credentials in clear text. Are you seeing this clearly? Okay. So there's a spider SQL spider CGI door one. M unlock, which is manual unlock. You have three versions or three modes of unlocking the control of the door. M unlock, which is manual, unlocked, which is forever unlocked, and locked, which is gonna, is gonna close the door. M unlock, which is gonna unlock it and lock it again in three seconds, default timestamp. So let's see. Let's see. Yeah. It's gonna go back. So I'm gonna try to open it forever. Spider, Siku. That is CGI door one. You can just select any door. You can just brute force all doors and open everything. Um, unlocked. It should stay unlocked forever now until somebody manually closes this or I close it. Why not? Lock. Lock it. Yeah. And that's it. And of course, I'm gonna mention as well again that, um, yeah, this is a video. Just skip this. This was just in case the demo gods were not with me, you know? <laughs> it's the usual approach. Um, <clears throat> any questions, guys? Hey, thank you, Gyaka, yeah. for, for this amazing talk. And uh, yeah, so we're still in the coffee break, but so feel free to make any questions now. And uh, I guess uh, he will be glad to answer to all of them. Yes, please and ask so, away. So, any questions? So, yeah. Okay. There we have one. It's a tough question, man. Sorry? We have an official public disclosure policy on our website. We give them like two months to, you know, react. But this was going on from since May 2018. So we tried several times to just explain what's really happening, but this current, uh, you know, this specific vendor, I think, I don't know what, I don't know what happened really. It just dropped communication. We, you know, had a phone conversation, emails, web chat, also contact forms, everything. Every time was the, yeah, did you try to contact your reseller? No, I'm trying to report a vulnerability, please. Then the, some management 
uh, con uh, contacted us, we say, yeah, we want to report serious critical uh, vulnerabilities. Yes, we already fixed them and uh, we've scanned the new firmware and uh, nothing is discovered anymore, so we are clear. I said, which vulnerabilities I didn't support anything? I mean, they didn't submit anything to you. So they just dropped communication. I don't know what happened. But the other ones, perfect. I mean, everything is fixed, everything is good. So yeah, one vendor remains exposed, unfortunately. But yeah, they were aware of the disclosure policy. They were aware that we are going to do a research paper and a presentation and it will be known. And basically, two years ago or three years ago, there was a, you know, research done on this specific vendor. And since then, also those, those vulnerabilities were not patched. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. We have another question here. Yes. Thank you for your talk. Did you find a lot of products sharing the same code base? In this industry, uh, is there one vendor selling everything to everyone? Uh, no, we've not. We haven't seen any similar or same code base of different products. No, everything was like different, different OEMs. So, yeah, maybe they are, but I don't know. Yeah. Any more questions? No more questions. Thank you, guys. Okay, so thank you once again. <laughs> <laughs>